The way of what? Evangelism. Part 3. So, last on Sunday we did Every Believer a Publisher, right? You are not following. So, today let's look at subtopic, the business of soul winning. See, this series, I can teach this series till December. But I have to stop somewhere. The business of soul winning. Have you ever gone out or heard from people when they say things like, church is business? Have you heard it before? Some people even say, for instance, I heard one particular minister, a senator came one time and accused Pastor Debo. He said he, had, he went ahead to open business centers for many of these rascals. Those people who are called rascals, are pastors. There are people who call church business center. Have you heard that before? They say church is business. You hear people say, I want to invest. I want to start my own. And many a times, when we hear things like that, we are offended. I want to tell you something today. When you hear things like that, never you be angry. Truly, it's a business. And the first person who used that word was your savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 2. Never you be offended. Luke chapter 2 verse 42. We'll read 42 into 50. Don't be offended when you hear people say or call church a business. Never you get angry. When they say your pastor is doing business, don't be offended. Don't be angry. Don't say, well, it's a lie. You want to fight. It's because you are ignorant. That's why. You're ignorant. Truly, we are buying and selling. We're selling something to buy certain things. That's a transaction. It is only ignorant people that get offended or angry when you hear people talk about church as business. The world wants you to agree. Therefore, take it and never you be offended. Because in your offense, you don't win anything. Accept it and move on. Capitalize on what they have said. Use it for your own glory. I'm going to show you how. Look at what Jesus said. This was Jesus at 12. The disciples, had, the, the parents had come to the synagogue. They usually would have a feast. And at this point in time, the crowd was much that they, the parents were going home. They thought he was with them in the entourage. Only for them to discover after three days of their journey, because from the place the synagogue was down to their home is so far. And they trek, there's no bus. So they now discovered, ah, where's Christ? Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? <laughs> Your Jesus was missing. <laughs> oh, very funny. When I read this, I just laughed. Jesus disappeared. They began to look for Jesus. How many of you have ever missed before in your life that your parents were now looking for you, now beat you? Has it happened to you before? Anybody like that? Uh -huh. Your Jesus also missed. But this time around, it was intentional. The Bible says he stayed. And when he was 12 years old, they went to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Like they usually have this program. Verse 43. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. He decided to tarry for the fall. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey and they sought him among the king's folk an acquaintance for the fall. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. You could imagine the, 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 the stress. They were now looking for him. And it came to pass after three days. <laughs> if the parents were from the east, he wanted that guy. They found him after three days. In the temple. Sitting in the midst of the doctors. Both hearing them. And asking them questions. At twelve. If his parents were from the west. Yorubas. They would finish those people. Ah ah. When you hear the way the thing will come out. The Bible says they sat with doctors and teachers. He was hearing them and asking them questions. 
And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers at twelve. Forty-eight. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee, sorrowing. They were even polite. You didn't get what I'm saying. Three days they were polite. Boy, what do you want? You have disturbed us. Three parents. The bag that they have, what you hear in your head, Jesus will come. <laughs> That's your Jesus. <laughs> he said, you, you, "You're disturbing. You've disturbed. You've disturbed us. Three days we've been looking for you." And he said unto them, "How is it that you sought me? Why are you looking for me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business." So whatever Jesus was doing at that time was his father's business. But that was not all about his father's business. That's one branch of his father's business. So winning is another branch of the father's business. This time around, he wasn't winning so. Remember, the Bible says he was what? Reasoning with the doctors and the teachers. Asking questions and hearing them. So that thing was the father's business. Jesus called it the father's business. Don't get offended. When people say, look at you. Your pastor is doing his own business. You, instead of you to go and face your business. You say, no, no, it's our father's business. Don't get offended. Don't be angry. And this is the business you and I have been called into. We have all been called into this business. This father's business. And this is not the only time. What do we do in this business? Let me show you something. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 to 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 to 21. I'm teaching you about soul winning, about evangelism. So I'm not shouting, no. I'm teaching you something. Because on Saturday you are going to be responsible for the, the things that the Father will bring your way. You should know what to do. Some people are just going to church. They don't know. They don't participate in anything. You know sometimes some people just come and say, I want to start doing something in church. Nobody is giving me anything. This is your father's business. Do this one. If there's no department, if departments have not been carved out to give to you for anything, do your father's business. Some of you, you say, I, I want to join the department. Say, hold on for the night. You're angry. I'm mean, let me go for another church, Ali. You are a departmental. You are a departmental there's, there's a sickness called departmental disease that is that disturbing you. Look for your father's business and get involved. Start bringing souls into the kingdom. Before you know what's happening, the church will recognize that this person is very important. I want to be in the media. Come here, don't finish. I want to join choir, and they know I don't want to chase them. I want to be an usher. <laughs> Hold on. You say, no, I want it now. We don't have a program. You say, can't I do something? You know, Sister Grace was telling me of some people wanted to join. I said, tell them to hold on. But this one, this particular department is empty. It says, pray you the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. This one needs more labor. Every day, they are recruiting. Look at it. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You and I, our father's business is to reconcile men back to him. That's the father's business. You are to reconcile men back to God. Bring men back to God. Reconcile them. Verse 19. To wait that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word, the ministry of reconciliation. He committed it to us. If we fail in this ministry, we have failed in our father's business. Verse 21, verse 20, sorry. Now, then, we are ambassadors.
ambassadors for Christ. Lift up your right hand and say, I'm an ambassador for Christ. He says, we are ambassadors. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. For he had made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now, you are a reconciler. You are bringing men back to their father. That is the ministry committed to us called the ministry of reconciliation. This is what you are called to do. As a teacher, as a banker, as a doctor, as an engineer. Seek out time. I'm going to show you something. Do you know that the word business, that's not the only time it occurs in the Bible. Acts chapter 6 and verse number 3. Let's look at the usage of the word business again. Acts chapter 6 and verse number 3. You find the number of times the word business was used in the Bible. It's only fools who argue. And get offended when they say your pastor is a businessman. You say, Father, no, he's a businessman. You push the man. Tell him, yes, he's a businessman. He's a very good businessman. And I'm going to show you why many of you fail in this business. For you to go into any trade, you require, you need certain amount of knowledge. You don't do buying and selling like that. That's why they pick guys. It's giving. It's, it's an inheritance. God gave it to the eastern man. They know how to do business. No matter the education, no matter the school, they go back. The thing is inborn. You bring a guy from the village, in few years, he's controlling the Dumota. Give them a bushy area, a forest, they turn it into a city. They know how to do it. It's in them, the thing is a calling, it's pushing them. The same thing. They learn it seven years, six years. They are learning the trade. They are learning the act of buying and what? Selling. They are learning it. They learn the customer value. How to speak to customers. How to address. How to wake up. How to be neat. How to do this one. How to do that one. How to do this one. You, they wake up. A proper Anambra businessman. You don't see the evidence of his wealth on him. He's his family. He's in the street. Looking for the money. The wife is at home. That's why they give them different names. It's, it's your generation that have changed. They call them Uriako. They sit down and eat the money. The man is there. He's hustling. He calls it hustler. The children are going to one of the... The guy does not know how to spell or read or write. They make sure they marry a graduate. Are you following me? To help the home... As for me, the man will laugh. I'm going to hear I'm in business. They bring documents, say, I'll take it home. Honey, honey, baby, baby. Then you, they, they make sure they marry a good woman. She sit down, stores it overnight. Say, don't sign it. Um, Mr. Man, take back your. Okay, sign is a bit. No. And outside, <laughs> <laughs> there is no amount of preaching you will preach that will make that man sign that thing. Why? He's through his backbone at home. He will tell you, she cannot lie to me. The day I go down, we go down together. So she says, she will not sign. Oga, I'm not sign. Oga said, I'm not signing. Security, pack this man out of this my office. <laughs> <laughs> are you with me? So they call me a business person, and you are you are angry that they look at it. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men. Watch this. Watch their watch their CV of honest report. Number one, full of the Holy Ghost. Number two, wisdom, whom we may apport over this business. Look at the criteria you need to do God's business. God does not employ a, a non-entity. No, sir. He says, number one, honest report. We must check you. If your report is not honest, God will never appoint you. He won't give you the job. You must be full of the Holy Ghost. Tongue talking. Because they will annoy you. Only the Holy Ghost inside you will tell you, come down, happen, leave them. Then the last one, you must have wisdom. 
I'm going to show you all of these things. You want, to, um, you, you, you want God to graft you in? Into his business partners? And you don't have this criteria? He can take you. You don't have wisdom? You don't have the Holy Ghost? You, don't have, you are not honest in your report? Let's look at another place where the word business occurs. Romans chapter 12. Are you learning something? Verse 11. Romans 12, 11. There's a whole lot of people watching across. A whole lot. A whole lot. Before I came out, I spoke with, and I know he's watching right now. I spoke with a particular pastor. An entire ministry in Akure. They are following. I was praying for him. I took him back six generations from his grandfather. Things that happened. The man was shocked. He's watching, right? They are an entire ministry given to this. They are also watching. So t- for you to know, we are training people how to win souls. So it's not only you that's here. There are some people who cannot... I think they are going to come for the program. Maybe Friday or something. They, they want to sort themselves accommodation and all of that. Because it, the time is too short. So they, they want to see if they can get a bus and do their the need. All the way from Akure. You have some from Mundo State. You have some from Ekiti. You have people following. Being trained. These are ministers now. Being trained on this series that you are following. That some of you may not know. That people are getting blessed by Pastor Bina just opening his mouth and teaching them. It's not just, that's what midweek is, is all about. It's not just every time somebody is breaking our chair. Let's impart knowledge. Let's teach them how to do their father's business. So the next time it occurs is this. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. It says not slothful in business. That means, give me that in Amplify. Don't, don't be slothful. Put it up. Amplify. Never lag in zeal. Don't do mele mele in the place of business. That means he wants you fervent. When you see souls, those are customers. You didn't hear what I said. Souls are what? There's a man I know. Give me, give me um, um, New Living Translation. There's a particular man um, I think somewhere around them. Um, um, what's it called? Maryland or something. Is it Maryland access down to connect between Maryland and Ikeja? The man has this. You cannot enter there and go. No. You must buy something. The moment he says, ah, oh God. No. He will just start smiling. What happened? The price? Don't worry. What is it? He will call the girl. What did you say? Uh, the man just, he says, 15 hours. Oh God. Is that the best you can do? Give it to him. He was just sitting down. Ha! Some people thought this guy is making, he's losing. No? Give it to him. Oh, guys, just for today. Next time when you come, that's the right real price. And he'll tell the girl, punch it. When he says punch it, that means put it on me. So they'll just draft it. They know, minus something. Bah, bah, bah. They just get it. Thank you. The man has crowd going there. They were watching, you know, he bought the next building. Bought and down, bought and down. They, they thought the man was losing. He's buying building. Every businessman has strategy. He says, never be lazy. But hard work and serve the Lord enthusiastically. You are winning so you are murmuring. You see customers, you are angry. This crowd, where they are now. No, no, I saw this. That's another place where business occurs. Go back to King James. Romans 16. Let's do one and two. Are you there? Not slothful in business. Don't be lazy when you see customers. Abokis are customers. Market women are customers. You may speak too much English. Huh? Go with people who also dilute their English. Send them to the field where they can meet those orange women. You look for the people in your group, in your world. That's why he said, go into all the world. 
Let professionals seek the professionals. Let the market women seek the market women. Let the student seek the student. When you have the opportunity to also what? Move to the other side. Do the same. Romans 12. Romans 16, 1 and 2. We're looking at the places where the word business occurs. You are reading the Bible. I commend unto you Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe. How many of you know that girl, Phoebe? One small girl that does skate. Phoebe, our sister. She's our sister. Which is a servant of the Lord, a servant of the church. Which is that? Look at who. She's a servant of the church, not a servant of the Lord. Phoebe is a servant of the church in Syncrete. This is where she's found. She's a servant of the church. She's a worker in the church. He now says something. Paul commends them in verse 2. He says, That you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you, for she had been a sucker of many, and of myself also. Assist her in her business. What business do you think she's talking about? You think they are selling a goosey? Give her assistance in the business, in soul winning. I'm showing you the places where it occurs. So you stop getting angry when people say you are, your pastor is a businessman. The church is a business. Be angry. Say yes. And we are, you are going to say something. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Are you putting them down? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. He now tells us the way we go, we should go about this, our business. Look at what it says. Let's read it together. One, two, go. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Study to be quiet. This business requires, the Lord's business requires that you be studious. It, you are required to be studious. You are required to be studious. You are required to do study. You say, ah, yes sir. The guy you pick from the village to come and learn the trade studies the act of business. That's your buying and selling. That's your selling of tire, selling of clothes, selling of shoes, whatever. In this our father's business, we must be studious. We study. Are you following me? Yes, study what? All right. Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. Do you know the people we call the JW, the Jehovah Witness? Huh? Have you seen them? Have you looked at them intently? Have you seen the way they carry out their business? They are well dressed, neat. You can't find a JW that is not well dressed. They speak well. They are taught. You see, they are groomed. They are raised well. They don't come out to shout. Banjo Mobede. You don't hear them in the bus say, You that is putting on with all, you will die. You don't hear them. They are well trained. It is we. That are, we don't know what we, we are doing. They come to you, they are always laughing. You don't find a JW that is angry. You are insulting them, they sit down. They tell you, you tell them, let's pray. Say, wait. They are smiling. Say, hold on. They give you a book, they hold their own. They are studious. Those guys, they are trained. They follow the scriptures. Whatever, they are scriptures. Are you following what I'm saying? They take time. If they want to discuss a book with you, welcome to that. They take a topic they give you. Then they say, let's talk about something. Is there life after death? I'm coming, I'm going to show you something now. You'll be shocked. Because the way we approach people in our business is the reason they run away. Sister! Mm-mm. 
Abraham, what? <laughs> Look at you. You put lashes. Lashes. You are going to hell. You that draw tattoo. Tattoo. <laughs> you will never find a JW by 6 a.m. No, sir. They don't do um, morning cry. They don't cry. They don't cry. You know why? The method did not come, was not originated here. It came from the other side. It's an abroad thing. They are civilized. They come to you when you are awake. They don't come one. They come in group. They come in two. When they come together, they split themselves. We do. That is why some of the people we send are raped. Look at the woman that was preaching in Abuja. Do you remember she was killed? We, we, we now say, but she was working for God. She was working for God, but she was not. The CV, do you remember? Part of the criteria is that you must have wisdom. When you come to a land that is somehow shift, don't shout. May I repent! At the window of a man that is a killer, calm down. Use wisdom. There's a way to get them. Have you ever heard that the JW were, were killed? Do you know they are in the plane? There's no nation you don't find it. 177 nations. They meet every year. Over 700,000 people will gather to meet and discuss. They are well trained. That is what I like. When you school and teach your people who are going out. And we do it meticulously. We don't just wear slippers and appear before people. No sir. They are well dressed. The small boys among them talking and they wear, they wear good clothes. They carry their Bible. Long sleeve. You don't see them tie their hair. Um, um, do, um, they get, guys, they don't do dread. and they don't, but they don't speak in tongues. But you speak in tongues and you have dread. You are failed in the business. There are certain appointments you don't get by wearing. You can't go to the governor with that thing. And you say, yo man, Jesus loves you man, governor man. Man, man, you just security man. <laughs> Beat this guy out, man. <laughs> but we say God understands. I'm just using the JW to give you an example. Watch this now. Study so that you can show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Your assignment is to sell. You are selling the gospel. The gospel is the word. The good news of Christ. You must study to know how you sell that word. You must study. You take time. Many of the people we are raising in the church today are not studious. That's why they go out without result. What material are we giving them? Philippians chapter 2, 15 to 16. Why do I need to study? You are going to meet certain people who are... Look up now. There are certain unbelievers. Huh? Remember our targets are not believers. For believers, what they need is invitation. For unbelievers, what they need is salvation. You need to be studious. Some of the people that are unbelievers, the reason they don't want to come to Christ or to the Christian faith, what you call your church... Is because they feel that most of the people who, are, who go there are unlearned, uneducated, illiterate. Because they see the way you carry yourself. When you are studious, when you study to show yourself approved, you know that you are going to sell the gospel. I'm going to show you some of the questions you should ask and some you should avoid. Some of them are well read, very educated. You will know how to start a conversation. See why I told you I can teach this series till December. I have books, it will be in volumes. Volume 1, volume 2, volume 3. The way of evangelism. You will, it's a school. You will come out not just an evangelist. Study. Have you studied the environment? Study the people? It's only market women. Bread sellers. Do professors not look at what the man who came to Jesus in John chapter 3? What did he say? For we know. For we know that no man can do this thing. That guy is a ruler. That means he's one of the senators. 
it came by night. Look at the conversation. Jesus didn't just say, Hey! Mm-mm. Look at his conversation. He says, Very, very essential. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. I say, What? What do you mean? He said, Look at me at my, at my age. Do I need to enter my mother's womb again and be born? Jesus said, And you call yourself a ruler? And you don't know these things. He said, I speak of earthly things and you don't know them. If I now speak of heavenly things, the guy now said, Oh God, help me. Look at where he started the conversation. Look at the conversation between Jesus and the woman in John chapter 4. How did he start? Woman, give me water. Woman, perceive. I know that you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. We ought not to drink water together. People shouldn't be in front of us. He said, if you know the one standing by your side, you would ask of me for for, for, for the water that I give. The woman said, Ah, ah. Oga. You don't have what to draw this water from. So, where are you going to get the water? He said, Your fathers drank this water and they died. Calm down. Can you see conversation? Study! That's why, madam, let me tell you something. Hair fire night, they play. <laughs> Hair fire! Madam, this is the way carry now. This week, now, mommy, what I do? Very local, unapproached. Look at the, the method we use in Africa. That's why we look. We oh, Cortez, Cortez. <laughs> the woman that Jesus ministered to in John chapter four, Jesus never started by saying you are a prostitute, but the woman was. Look at what he now. He said, "Go and call your husband." He said, "I don't have a husband." He said, "I know. You have married five times." The one you are living now is not even your husband. How do you know? Are you a prophet? He didn't say, Madam, you are living in iniquity. 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 Sin. Jesus did not shout all those rubbish. You. you the way we do things is so, so. You look, you got a sister. She has image. How many of you are here on Sunday? One on one. There was a lady I was talking to. I had to pause politely. Start down. I said, you know that our business will not go back there again. She said, yes. Do you know after the service, she was calling. She said, I just love the way you spoke to me. Study. Study. You know why I study? That lady is a lady. She will marry one day. Don't dent her image in order to prove you are a prophet. What do I stand to again? So if I say, you are now Kuna. <laughs> is he? Confirm it. Confirm it. The Lord is speaking to me. Wrong. <laughs> Man of God, enter. Enter. Where? Such ground you will discover they are not studious. They are not studious. The way some of you are looking at me. <laughs> when you study, you know that for God to love the world. How many of you are getting what I'm saying? We are training ourselves. Study. Study. Somebody say study. Philippians chapter 2, 15 to 16. <laughs> You're a prostitute. Yes, yeah. you're a prostitute. No, can I tell you not the color of your pants you are wearing right now? Oga, 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 oga. Leave color of pants. You don't need it for anything. We, we your pants here, Okay, if you tell us the color now, what are we going to do? What do we, what do we learn from the pants? Watch this. That you may be blameless. The reason he said you should what? Study. That you may be blameless. Harmless. The sons of God. Without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Among whom we shine as light in this world. Give me the amplifier. You come into the camp of prostitutes and you say beautiful children of a beautiful God. Oh! Look at the way you guys are smelling. Like the rose that the Lord has blessed. My God, you guys are beautiful. Look at beauty. You just see the come on, go here. You fine. You not say ah ah. 
you have pulled attention. The way they are laughing, I say, come, I want to talk to you. Sit down. Do you know, you know, as I was passing, I saw your glory shining. The Lord told me you were supposed to be living in America. You have gotten attention. She's not going to any America. Or you have gotten... <laughs> Celebrate God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those as I pass, I perceive death. Who? 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 Study. Study. That you may show yourself to be blameless and glueless, innocent and uncontaminated, children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebuked, in the midst of a crooked, we are living in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are seen as bright light, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. Verse 16, put it in the Amplified. Thank you, Jesus. Holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. <laughs> Tell them something sweet. The boss conductor. Tell him, wow. We'll go amen. There is nobody. There is nobody you will not win. By first admiring the person. Telling them something beautiful. How do you think false prophets first get people? Phil still the guy. Ah. Hey, Joshi Moli Bainso. Chemi. Ah. 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 Muko ro go nini. You see that he go, he go just drop her. Ah. O go in and turn. O drop her. O go to me. Chemi lo go by. Po bu eni mo di fi bag boto. You say no, 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 no. Ah. Bi mo she koja. He will drop the igbo. He will kill it. You now say, "Ejen buy sorrow." Ewa, you now come. Ah, you now start from there. Don't say, "Hey, we must check out that should not find you." But the guy will just he will light the other one. Emi ade shugala jam be buy. Are you me? Don't scare people. Holding to it. And offering to all men the word of life. So that in the day of Christ, I may have something of which exultantly to rejoice and glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. You went out. You didn't win one person. And you say you're a businessman. Don't do business like ordinary men. The way I want us trained is the way you learn something from JW. Appear well. Dress well. Go out there. Sit down with someone. Hold your Bible. Hold a note. A note. Hold something. Sit down. There are certain questions you should not ask. Number one, don't ask anybody if they are saved. The average person will be scared of that question or get angry or never give you an answer. Don't say, are you saved? No. In a civilized world, the world is civilized now. Some of them sees it as an insult. Like, okay, 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 okay. Now you say, baby. <laughs> okay, okay. So don't ask them, are you saved? Are you? Only few people will give you a correct answer of that. Some will just say yes. Then they will not wait for the yes. Are you with me? Number two. Don't tell people they will go to hell. Don't do it. Never you tell anybody you are going to hell. Don't tell them. You must have gotten a conversation. You must have gotten your conversation right. Before you could even bring the subject of hell and death. Don't tell anybody you're going to hell. Can I tell you something? The average person you see in the street then knows about hell and knows indirectly where he's going to. He's just looking for someone to help him escape that place that his mind is already telling him that he's going to. Then you now came. The Bible says how beautiful. Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring good tidings, good news. Tell me, when you tell someone you are going to hell, is it good news? Be studious. Have you ever heard the JW tell you, 
talk to you about. They say, ah, let's talk about eternal damnation. The way they will call it, even you yourself, you sit down. You want to learn. One beautiful thing about, and that's one of the things we learn as we grow in our magazine. We learn to get to a point where we will change that our magazine and everything. It becomes something you learn from. We bring in some things into it that you could challenge the mind. You see some inventions. You see some things. How the gospel came in. The canonization of the gospel. How did it become 66 books written by 40 men? Because there are other books. Why were other books not accepted? Who canonized it? The way you people are looking at me. Don't tell them you go to hell. Repent now or you die. No, don't say that. Those sound condemning to them. Don't say that. Those are old approach. Things are changing. Right? Number three. What am I to do? Just give them the word of God. And from there they will repent. They will be the one to ask you, what then can I do? Then you tell them, you will now give your life to Christ. Share the word of God with them. Choose a topic you want to discuss. Choose a topic. Sometimes the most popular one you hear people is John 3.16, for God so loved the world. No, no, no. Talk to them about two important destinies. Talk to them say, brother, can I talk to you about something? God's ultimate plan for man. Tell them about the glory. See, I want to talk to you about the glory of families. Wow. Glory of families, yes. So you now begin to talk to them about different families. The family of kings. Oni of Ife. Oba of Ibadan. These are families. You now ask the brother, what's that your family name? <laughs> the guy will now tell you, ah, Lekon, say, hey, family. You know, your family has a glory. But among all these families, there's a family. That supersede all family. The glory in that family. You see all these families can be aborted. Their glories can be aborted. But the family, there's a family where you don't touch their glory. Brother, do you like that family? And I say, yes, what is that family? <laughs> Otita gospel. You are a good business. Clap for me. I'm teaching you how. You go there now, you tell the person, hey, brother, see here they call you. one of the topics I've taught you. Begin to share. From there, know you are a good businessman. Know when to stop and digress to let the person know you need Christ. Tell the person, I want to talk to you about a, the higher life. There are different lives. Brother, did you go to school? Sir? Okay, do you, you did a little bit of physics. There's something called biology. Eh? Say yes, 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 biology. Yes, I remember. Because the person is elderly. He must have forgotten. Say, okay, let's not talk about so much. About, but you know plants. Yes, all this grass, they have their life. Yes, yes. It's called the plant life. Animals, lion, dog, they have their life. It's called the animal life. Human, they also have their life. It's called the human life. Don't bring Greek. Oh. Don't share Hebrew. Don't, don't, bring, don't bring Greek. Don't say the Greek word is away. <laughs> the, guy, the, guy will just, the guy will just carry his back. Walk uh, baby, walk baby. Because the, the way you are going... <laughs> You know, the human life is called suki. <laughs> you know what <laughs> so, <laughs> suke, eh? <laughs> oh, suke. <laughs> don't, don't bring Greek. Don't bring Hebrew. Did you hear what I said? Don't bring Greek. Don't bring Hebrew. Then just say the third life. There is something called the life of God. God has his life. That life is the life he gave his son. You now read First John 5. That life, this life now. You see, when you are born, brother, you are born with the human life. That life that you came with, your father gave you. Your mother contributed your body, your father contributed the life. He's looking at you. He said, but when you now receive this one, this life I'm telling you now is in a man called Jesus. When you receive him, he will come into your life and give you that life. Can I tell you the advantage of this life? He says, yes. You are indestructible. I'm telling you, brother. You are above sickness. What? Say yes. You are above human destruction. 
I'm telling you. If they call your name in the mirror, it will not appear. The man is opening his eyes like this. You know what he will tell you? I have never heard it like that. Hold my hand, brother. Say after me. Lord Jesus. What do you Say, brother, I'm coming tomorrow. Give me your number. Come to God. You meet a businessman. Just go to his office. He's a senior or he's a big man. Just sit down. Things have been rough. Just sit down. Sir, you know I was praying. I was led to just come to you. I want to talk to you. A voice told me to come and talk to you about the spiritual side of business. He will give you attention because the man is, all he hears is business. Business. Spiritual side. Sir, do you know that there is the market side of business? The morning side of business. The afternoon side of business. There is the night side of business. If you don't win at night, you can't win in the day. The man say, hey! <laughs> See! How many of you are getting what I'm saying? The man will not know when he's giving you attention. The next day he will be looking for you. Sir, let me lead you how to. You have given his life to God. You say, for more, if you want me to be coming to share with you. Don't first say, I want to invite you to our church. Hold on for now. Just hold on. He will, tell you, he will be quick to say, ah, no, just tell him. Sir, I will be coming, anytime you are lesbian, just share some things with you, some truths. So long as you can be seeing the person. The next two days again, you go back. Sir, I'm here. You go with your Bible, notepad, messages. Ah, something was taught in church. My God. You say, what's that? Pastor taught us about something I've never heard before. He said, what is that? He said, sir, hey, if you hear this message, you must, what is it now? <laughs> Hi! How many of you remember that message I've shared on Sunday? 15 minutes, but I came like this, talking to you about huh? stories, revelations, and I came like this. Do you remember? Do you remember? What's the title? See? <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see? You, you, you have... It's just a few weeks. Two weeks. Two or three weeks. You say, sir, unless a man is enabled, he can't rise. See, eh? That's the title of the message. What? Pastor scatter scripture. Sir, give me five minutes. Let me summarize it. Sit, sit down. Customer said, Hey, be actually do attend to that guy. Okay? Talk to me. Enablement. Don't give him Greek. Leave the Greek work that I, I, I gave you. Leave it. Sir, to be enabled means you are strengthened. Sir, do you know in this business we have a cultic man? Share it with among students. Tell a student you can be enabled. See. All these lecturers and VC, they will look at you and they'll be like, they don't know where you're coming from. By the time you say, can we pray together? Say yes. You bow your head. Say, Father, thank you. For you have enabled your son in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, I'll see you some other time. God bless you, sir. Thank you. He says, come and take drinks. Say, no, no, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. The next time you are coming, come with table water. Say, I, I bought this for you. Children, try it. I came to share something again. Pastor scattered on Sunday. One day when I say, this pastor, where in the Take me to that place. That is how you transform from salvation to invitation. Are you learning something? Don't be quick to condemn people. Don't tell them you are going to, this short skirt you are wearing. Hell, don't they call you? Hell, hell. Give them the word and let them be. Number four, be wise and careful. Be good. Be wise and careful. Be good. Be observant as a serpent. Don't condemn people. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. A soft answer turns away rot. Don't say things that will scare people away. Thank you, Jesus. Number six, right? Five, never argue. And make sure you answer every question from the word of God. Don't argue. Don't say, <laughs> don't say, oh God, oh God, I don't know it. Do you know what happened in Biafra? In Biafra war. 
don't <laughs> you are when you find a a man a believer who is winning some and is arguing it shows that you didn't study you don't know your business you don't argue allow them learn allow them learn people you're going to meet people who ask you from very crazy questions crazy questions I met one one time who asked me, do you believe in um, um, Akudaya? You, you, they, they have a name in English. Um, reincarnation. He said, do you believe in reincarnation? He, he, asked, he actually asked me in Yoruba because he was a Yoruba guy. He said, do you believe in Akudaya? You know, he said, the story was told and he said, um, it was when the pastor said that in church. I walked out of the church and I've not been to church since 15 years. He said they saw a man who died and he appeared in Calabar and was married and all of that. And we tried to ask that question. He doesn't have any scripture. Do you really believe in it? In reincarnation? He said, um, no. Don't argue. Don't say no, it doesn't exist. Don't be quick. If you don't have scriptural basis, say, you know what? Can we asteric it here? Will you be around tomorrow? Be wise. Will you be around tomorrow? Let me get my spiritual facts, scriptures, to back up that thing. So tomorrow we'll sit down and analyze it. So when you come, what you do is, you seek for higher help. Sir, this reincarnation, teach me, sir, because I have a convert that I must bring to the Lord. Don't say no! Let me tell you something. Going up to a head, I can't... <laughs> The man, is, the man is looking at you. In his mind, he says, let me go find trouble. Find trouble. Man, who asked this guy this question? Are you learning something? Don't argue. Number six, right? Okay, don't argue. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. Don't, ask, don't argue. Don't argue. Don't let people meet you. They have small questions. They have two questions. After they met you, they don't have 16. Second Timothy chapter 2. 23 to 25. Let's look at it. Now, flee also youthful laws, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives, war, anger, fight. Don't, he said, flee. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord, you must not what? Strive. But be what? Gentle unto all men. Be apt, quick to teach. But make sure you are what? Patient. Verse 25. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You will even sign someone who is opposing himself with what he's saying. He says, calm down. Let's pray that God will give such a person repentance to come to the truth. Don't fight anybody. You are a minister of the gospel. And because you are studious, no matter how much you push a Jehovah witness, he doesn't fight you. They don't argue. Just sit down. And they will come back the next day. But, 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 my, my, another person will go, my brother, wow, I can see you are preparing food to eat. Eating is good. I have a book on eating. Look at it. Your diet is your food. As you read beneath it, end up to the word of God. You meet someone eating, what do you say? Say, brother, what you are doing is good. You're feeding your human body. But you know your spirit too needs food. Start a conversation. Be wise. Go say, ah, brother, you know the fast? For this Lenten period. Now die, go die. So <laughs> be studious. <laughs> Number. Be gentle and firm. That may stand your ground and refuse to be tossed to and fro. Be gentle and firm. Be gentle and firm. What do I mean? Sometimes they, 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 you, you might be talking to someone and her daughter or his son will just run. Help carry that one. Maybe the person is trying to do something. Help. Be gentle. Don't say this you are picking where they cry too much. <laughs> they cry too much. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and you want to win that person? Oh, uh, no, no. If they ask any question you do not know, don't bluff or shy away. Just say, I will go and ask. I will come back. That's what I told you.
Why is all of these things important? Because you are a business person. Wow, it's past eight already. You are a business person. And you need to be studious. This is how I grew in the Lord. This is how I grew in my business of soul winning. This is how I can approach. Do you know? Do you know? I don't just read only spiritual books. Sometimes I want to get myself acquainted with many things. Because you might meet, you might meet. Um, I, I was discussing with someone. I, I, I think I shared with Bernie or something. I was discussing with someone. He's an engineer, very top person. And we got talking, and he, saw, he said to me, he "said Pastor, you know, um, do you know um, a plane?" I said, "Yeah, definitely." He said, you know, a plane has, consists of two engines. I said, yes. He said, then, you know, when you dissect it inside, I said, turbo engine. He said, pastor, you know it. He said, you see, the way a turbo engine rolls, listen, I have not seen the turbo engine, but I read to know. So that you can start a conversation. When you meet a professor, he wants, in his field, he wants to find you. Interesting, exciting. Outside your Bible, what else can you say? Then from there, enter. Talk about fashion. Talk about things. Sometimes you may not know in your joke, in your laugh. You taught me all back. Now I know all back. Yes. So I meet someone and the sister said, very beautiful. I said, wow, sister, you, it, it, what you're putting on? Is, is it a week? Mm, do, you have, do you have all back? She just smiled. You know all back, pastor, I've, I've started. For the fact that she can laugh, we have started a conversation. And you may not know I got the all back from you. If you meet someone like Kizdane, right? And you're going to the airport, you just meet Kizdane. You just say, wow! And he sees you as a man of God. Don't say man of God, just say, twe, twe. You don't say, wow, you know it. You have gotten him. You have used this to whatever. You have used it to what? Get him. He is making money, but you have gotten him. You don't say, wow, I don't know pastors know. Ah, pastors with my latest. Do you know that thing? I said, I saw it. You have over 100 million views. Pastor, you really follow it. So, wow. You know one thing? I love the, the way you just got it. You know, music is spiritual. <laughs> you have entered. There's a sound. You know, you cannot tell me that you studied that in school. So, no. There's a sound. When you sleep, they come, right? You know, there's a dimension of God that music carries. You have entered. You started from to where People think you are a sinner, but you have, you are a proper businessman. The Chinese, when they enter your market, they view, they check. They want to know what the people love. When you enter the world of men, know what they love. Thank you for today. Bow your heads. It's time to pray and talk to the Lord. If this is the way you have fathered me, I love the way she fathered me. Look at me. Do you know when we came into this place? The association here were waiting for us to see the kind of church we are. So that they will write a petition against us and throw us out. But I'm wise. Because they had assumed that every church must be noise making, shouting Holy Ghost fire all night every day. That's not how to try that's not how to try. They came back to me and said, if all men of God can be like you, we will all give our life to Christ and go to church. Be mild. Be flexible. Every place I find myself, there's an opportunity for me to talk to someone. That's how I learn some of the comedies you feel sometimes. You think I cram them? When I stand there, anyone, you just see the thing is flowing. I did, I don't think of anyone today what I'm going to give them. If this is the way you father me, some of us are you, you find some preachers, their face and, and dispositions too. They are too they are too they, they are like this. They are portraying a Jesus that is not so so deeply spiritual. I'm more spiritual than many of this one. Your spirituality is not your quiet. Hey! Hmm. Jesus.
Jesus told them to go buy meat. And he went to a woman, sat down. And was having a conversation with a prostitute. You know a prostitute came and poured oil on it and, and cleaned it. Do it today. They will say, hmm, customer dadani. Dadani. Customer dadani. Hey. Dadani. They said, hmm, if Jesus, if he knew, if truly is a prophet, you know this woman. Jesus said, leave her. She has anointed me for my burial. They said, do you, do you think he care? The woman was crying. She later became a disciple. We must win them all. Look for how to win the people in your world. Let's be on our feet. Stand up. If this is the way you father me. You are going to meet, some of you are going to meet serious atheists. What about if you meet someone whose father was a pastor and passed on and was angry with God for all the service that his father rendered and God never paid his father? What are you going to do? When you meet such person in school. Meet some rugged student. Who tell you listen I don't care. There's a, there's a movie I'm trying to remember. It was not acted. It was very interesting. Very educative. It was a sister... A Christian sister who had to win a particular court, tough court guy, very tough. Oh boy, that girl was smart. She won the guy. You know the dream she had? A voice told her the only way you can win that guy is to make sure that guy fall in love with you. There are people. Paul says, I've become of all things unto all men, huh? just to win. That I want to get this girl. I keep buying her gold. Making her. She falls in love with me. <laughs> and in falling in love. You sell Christ. And her love is converted. She stops seeing me. And all she sees. Is Jesus. How do you think? Have you ever read my Moro's book? The most important person on earth. Have you read that book? That book was published. It was a speech he gave in a Muslim background. In a Muslim nation. He was called upon to give a speech. The man thought of how to sell the gospel. To this damn Muslim very rugged guy. And he was talking to them about the most important person on earth. Everybody wanted to know. But they never knew he was going to wind up preaching the gospel. The most important person was the Holy Spirit. He never called him the Holy Spirit. It was later in that book. It was called the Holy Spirit. The Muslims have all given their life to Christ before they remember that this guy had just used him. He's a very smart person. You can't come to such God and tell them Jesus is Lord. No. But as a way you start it, you must be studious. You must be intelligent. Jesus didn't die for fools only. He wants to give you a sound mind. That's the way you present the gospel. I met a man who used to take me on bike many years ago. Around my 12. Staunch Muslim. I made a man fall in love with me. That on purpose I distanced myself away from him for two months. And he was looking for my dad. So my dad, he said, where's that your son? He said, that guy is too good. And finally, when I surfaced, the man said, tell me about your son. When I spoke to him, gave his life to Christ. Be lovable. Be approachable. Let people love you. Keep a smile. Let people know they can trust you. That if they invade your world, they are secure. Don't always keep it. And you will all do ma or do me what you dear. Are you with me? 
Be ready to pray for someone. Always. You can pray for a native doctor without calling the name of Jesus. Just hold the hand of the man and say, Oh God Almighty, I call on you that you help this man and his children. Do it, Lord, because you are God. That all praise be yours. Thank you, Father. And you are out. When the answers come, the man says, Who did it? He said, Can I talk to you? Jesus, a name above all names. My Jesus, the name above all names. When I call him, he will answer. You just, you sell the gospel. You don't have to be too stiff. In the bus, you target some, the Holy Spirit might be nudging your heart. Look at the person. Can I tell you something? Anytime you are praying or you are sitting down and God brings the image of someone to you and say pray for this person, it means that God is already working on the heart of the person. Go look for the person. Sell the gospel. It's very easy. He has already convicted the person. When you meet the person, the person says, I just thought about you. Sit in the bus, look at his sister just smiling. Just say, can I pay for your bus? Let me pay for your tea. Don't worry. Just, wow. You're so beautiful. Then pretend as if you're not looking at her. If she smiles, just say, my name is Patrick. What about yours? Sharon, Sharon, Oh, no, the bad. Oh, no, you will have not given your life to Christ. Jesus came to save those who are lost. He will leave the 99 to look for that one. I was telling somebody one day, I said, I know that someday they might cut this. I know I'm going to meet Two Face. I've loved Two Face even before he became. I'm going to hold his hand one day and say, You're a good guy. God loves you. Because Jesus used him to explain to me grace one day. So I know I'm going to meet him and tell him what Jesus told me about. And he will break down. Your name is Lord. Have I taught you something tonight? Do you know how to meet your word right now? Emmanuel. I pray for you that the test for souls, the hunger, the passion, the zeal for souls will begin to burn in you day and night. The Lord will give you a coat of many colors. He will teach you himself. And grant you many answers and methods. Through which you will bring many to the kingdom. May the Lord grant you fame. Increase your borders. In the name of Jesus. Glory me. Glory me.